What is going on YouTube? I bet you're thinking, where the heck's his garden? Where's his backyard? Well, today I don't need to be out there because uh, I had four and a half pounds of tomatoes and I had a coworker who was like, hey, you ever want to do some cooking shows? And I said, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. So uh, today I've got four and a half pounds of tomatoes that have been diced and they are now sitting, simmering here to become soft so I can make tomato paste. And the reason I'm making tomato paste is that I want to add it to a dish later on. But essentially I'm going to take this opportunity to demonstrate how I make tomato paste. So I'm not going to show you the knife skills. You know how to cut up tomatoes. Cut them into chunks, you know, one inch chunks. Put them in a, in a, a pan, right? I have gas, uh, so I have mine set to about, you know, four and a half, five. Uh, a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to let it simmer to get soft and uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, I don't know, I'm just going to kind of take a gauge of how much froth and everything else has come up here on the top. And then I'm going to run it through a, a sieve. Uh, if you have a food mill, uh, which is an older kitchen appliance that most people don't have in my opinion because everyone has food processors. But essentially I'm going to run this liquid and this puree through a sieve to make sure I don't have any skins or seeds. And then essentially after I do that, I'm going to boil it down until it becomes a thick paste. And once I have a paste, I can add that paste to another dish to give it a nice taste, you know. So uh, let me zoom in here. I'll, uh, I'll show you what's cooking. And then uh, once we get to the next step of when it boils down, I'll show you the texture. And I'll tell you how long it took. And we'll go from there. So I'm just using a fine mesh uh, sieve, colander, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. And uh, using this uh, glass bowl. and. We're just going to go through and put little bits in here and rub it pretty aggressively through the screen to make sure I get all my puree and leave the skin and the seeds behind. And then once we go through this several times and get all of the gunk that was remaining uh, from the tomatoes, the parts that aren't really the desirable parts, we'll go through and then we'll simmer down the, the remaining. So yeah, here you go. So. I've got all the seeds and the skin separated from the, the juice and the puree uh, remaining from the tomatoes. And I used Roma's Super Bush and a Super Steak, so they're all grown in my garden. You may have seen some of the videos where I'm, you know, got a substantial amount going. Not as some, much as some people, but anyway. Uh, and then because uh, I've got roughly four, four and a half pounds, I've put two bay leaves in. So you put one bay leaf per two pounds, roughly. Uh, and that's just to help to give it a little more flavor. So what I'm going to do now is uh, simmer this down. Right now I've got it set on five and a half on my gas stove. I'm going to keep scraping until it gets down to a paste uh, consistency. And then once we get to that consistency, I'll take it off the heat. And then I'm going to put it in containers. And I'm going to freeze those containers. Uh, I'm not real smart on pressure cooking or water bath canning. I've done it a little bit, but I don't want to mislead anyone and get you sick. Uh, I feel like there are some people out there that are a little cavalier when they try to do it, and I'm not going to put you in that position. So uh, maybe for something different I would, I would teach you, but not with this. So we're just going to freeze it. It's simple. Everybody's got a freezer and a Ziploc baggie, you know, uh, easy to get done. So we'll see. We'll, we'll come back to this once it's done cooking down. So I should have been paying attention to the time, but... You know, what you all you got to do is sit here and kind of watch the viscosity of, of what your sauce is doing. So if you get little buildups here on the side of the pan, make sure you scrape that down back into the concoction. <laughs> the concoction. Your tomato paste. And, uh, you know, keep stirring it on occasion. Keep an eye on it. Uh, if you think it's boiling a little bit too hard, I actually turn mine down just a little bit. Back down on the, between four and five. Um. We just want to slowly get it to that nice pasty consistency and then we'll go from there. So we'll check back in here in a little bit. So once again, we've kind of reached another stage of viscosity. You notice how it's just the bubbles, right? There's going to be a sound. I don't know if it's going to pick up on the microphone and I'm not going to try to get to that level of dynamicism here, but um, you'll get more of a, like a sludgy feel, right? So if you haven't turned your... Uh, your stove down at this point, I really recommend turning it down uh, because as you thin down and the layer that you're heating up gets thinner and thinner, you don't want to burn it. So 
I've got mine down to about a three now. I'm pretty sure at some point I'm gonna get down to a two. Don't base my stove levels off of your stove level. You might have electric glass top. Like I said, I'm cooking with gas. Uh, you just kind of have to know how your stove behaves. And I don't know how to explain that to you. I've lived in multiple different houses with multiple different stoves. And I swear to God, I have to relearn how to cook every time I move. So at this point in time, keep paying attention to how it moves, how it bubbles, how it sounds. Adjust your heat. Keep stirring it so that you can keep you know, flavors moving around. You got those bay leaves in there. You know, Keep the sides scraped up. And uh, little by little, we're getting closer. Almost there. Watch this, eh? So you know you're getting close when you can move your spoon there. You can actually see your pan because the fluid... There just ain't enough of it to fill back in. So just make sure that you're pulling fluid from the parts that aren't getting cooked as much as no one as the outside. And uh, yeah. Look at this. You can pull that up. It's not even trying to really get back to where it was. There's still a little bit of excessive moisture left in the mixture. So we're going to have to still cook this out a little bit more. I don't know the exact amount of time it's going to take. You know, I'm going to say probably about another 15 to 20 minutes is my guess, right? It's just going to depend on how much you had in here, the the width of your your dish, etc., your pan. So be just keep attentive to it. Don't let it burn. But you'll notice, you know, when you pull it back, you can kind of see that like sugary how sugar kind of bubbles and spackles. So we're really close to having this refined down to a nice, nice, tasty paste. So as you see here, when I move this, I mean, it's, God, it's close. But I still want it to be just a little more, a little more thick. I'm so close. Well, that doesn't need to be paste paste, but what I'm going to do is, after I do that, it's really hard to get it to spread back out. So we're going to do the professional chef thing and just kind of shake it thin back in the in the pot. You know, try to get my sides knocked down a little bit. Let this finish drying out. It's so close. And uh, then we'll put it in containers here in a minute. I'll probably put one in the fridge because I'm going to use it, and then the other one in the freezer. But... I'll actually wait to show you. I think I had four pounds, eight ounces, and we'll see how much paste we actually got from those tomatoes. It ain't gonna be much. I'm gonna bet you there's six to eight ounces of paste. I could be wrong. I'll probably get just completely shamed, but that's what I'm guessing. All right, I, I backed the camera out. I'm super happy. This has that nice, it can stand on its own. Like, look at that. Uh, peaks. So, let's go ahead and... You know, it's got a nice raisiny flavor to it. I like it. It's good stuff. So, let me go ahead. Uh, let me get a my scale out. And uh, get the tear, right? So, get the, the weight of the containers subtracted from it. And then I'll put the paste in the containers. And uh, let's see how much we got. So my contain so my containers weigh point two ounce or they're you know uh, two ounces point two ounces. So let's go ahead and get some of this really nice looking paste. You know I'm not a culinary guy, right? I'm sure somebody's out there judging me, telling me I did it wrong. Blah blah blah. Well, do you know what? I got tomatoes I gotta use. You don't like it? Don't eat my food. But I hope this, I mean, honestly, I hope it, I hope it works for you. Um, you know, you can only make so much salsa. You know, my kid, she eats a heck out of them. She's always stealing them, but you know, she can only eat so many too. I like tomato products. I don't really like raw tomatoes. So let's see what we got. Almost there. 
2.5 apparently I need 3.5 ounces for my recipe let's see where we're at oh, 3.4 3.5 sweet All right. and that container weighs the same I'll go ahead and I'll get this filled up and I'll jump back on because you don't want to watch me doing this boring scraping job. I'm a realist. I know what I do on YouTube. I skip ahead because I'm impatient. See you in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there is my 6.4 ounces of tomato paste. You ain't doing this to save money because by the time you factor in, you know, what you grow in the garden, that cost and cost of gas and all that, this is more about just enjoying your own culinary skills, learning something, uh, being self-sufficient really is what it boils down to. But um, I'm going to use this in a uh, Cincinnati style spaghetti sauce. Uh, some people like it, right? Skyline chili or, you know, uh, Gold Star. I like it. If you don't, so be it. I think it's either one camp or the other. There's really no in between. But uh, yeah, like I said, I started with about four and a half pounds of tomatoes. <laughs> You're down to you know, six ounces. You know, not even not even half pound of paste. Uh, so the great part though is this is easy to store, right? I can just throw it in the freezer and use this to thicken up any type of uh, tomato base uh, recipe that I'm cooking. So that's that's what's really nice. Um, it's really tasty, super raisiny, super sweet, and I know exactly what's in it. So that's the best part about making your own. This is tomatoes, had a little bit of olive oil, and a bay leaf. There's no extra sugars, there's nothing. So if you've got a couple hours of time, and a couple pounds of tomatoes, go ahead and give it a shot. Make your own paste. Anyway, thanks for visiting my channel. If you've never subscribed, please consider. I do other things such as gardening, reloading, etc. Uh, that way you'll be uh, aware when new content is made. And anyway, I appreciate it. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you around.